Uh, hello, my name is Jared Morton. I'm a radiation oncologist at the Sunnybrook Cadet Cancer Centre and Professor of Radiation Oncology at the University of Toronto. It's my pleasure to talk to you today about uh, HDR brachytherapy. It's used both as a boost and as monotherapy. I have no disclosures. The objectives of uh, this session will be to allow uh, the listener to distinguish between HDR and LDR brachytherapy, to describe how HDR brachytherapy is performed, and to select patients for both HDR boost and HDR monotherapy. Brachytherapy involves the placement of radioactive sources right into the heart of the cancer. And there are two ways of doing this for prostate. One is low dose rate brachytherapy, which is probably more familiar to many, which involves the placement of radioactive seeds permanently within the gland. And the other is high dose rate brachytherapy, which is a temporary form of, of brachytherapy. Either form of brachytherapy involves the placement of some uh, afterloading catheters or needles into the gland, usually transperineally. Uh, the area of gross disease, the GTV, can sometimes be determined. And a plan is devised to deliver a dose of radiation to encompass both the GTV as well as areas of subclinical spread of cancer throughout the prostate or beyond the confines of the gland. For LDR brachytherapy, the seeds are permanently left in place to deliver the dose. For HDR brachytherapy, catheters are placed through which an afterloading source is remotely sent. And the source is programmed to dwell at different positions for different lengths of time, uh, thus delivering the required dose. Either form of brachytherapy has significant advantages over external beam radiation. One advantage is that brachytherapy, and this is an LDR implant shown on the left of the screen, delivers a much higher dose within the prostate compared to an external beam plan, which generally delivers a homogeneous dose throughout the gland. So with brachytherapy, we're able to selectively deliver higher doses to different parts of the prostate where the cancer might be. Another and probably bigger advantage is that the dose of radiation falls off much more rapidly. So for example, with a brachytherapy implant, 50% of the dose falls off within millimeters. With a typical uh, external beam treatment, uh, it is several centimeters before 50% of the dose uh, is, is, is uh, delivered. And a significant volume of normal tissue is bathed with a low dose, uh, which may have implications long-term, especially when we consider risk of second malignancy in the, longer, in the longer term. The process for doing these implants is very similar. So in the case of um, LDR, permanent seeds are, are inserted transperineally. This is usually preceded by a plan where the, um, the, the, the physician works out where the seeds need to be and how much radiation needs to be in the seeds. These are then inserted transperineally and following placement, a check is made on the quality of the implant. With HDR, uh, catheters are inserted into the prostate transperineally um, and a plan is generated and treatment is delivered using a robotic system which will send remotely the uh, radioactive pellet one by one down the implanted catheters. There are differences between LDR and HDR. LDR delivers a very high dose slowly over weeks or months. And during this period of time, some toxicity, particularly urinary toxicity, can occur. There's also a risk of seed displacement or movement after placement. So the uh, ultimate dose quality may not be quite as expected. And LDR is most commonly used as monotherapy for more favorable risk disease. HDR, on the other hand, delivers the dose over minutes um, and is able to treat disease outside the prostate, for example, in seminal vesicles or uh, extraprostatic. It's easier to shape the dose delivery to conform uh, around uh, 
areas of cancer or normal tissues and is most commonly used as a boost with external beam. How is it performed? Well, the first step is to insert catheters under trust guidance. Imaging is then performed with the catheters in place, and this can either be using ultrasound, CT, MRI, or sometimes a fusion of different modalities. The next step is to contour the target volumes and organs at risk. Planning is then undertaken, treatment is delivered, and catheters are removed. So first step uh, will look very familiar to anybody who's, who has, uh, uh, has performed prostate LDR brachytherapy, the patient is positioned in a very standard position, an ultrasound is placed on the rectum, and the template is used to help guide the placement of catheters. So we typically begin anteriorly in the gland, uh, and then gradually work and place posterior rows of catheters. Most often we would end up uh, implanting 16 catheters in the distribution that you can see on the right of the screen. At this point, there are options. Uh, many centers would then use CT-based planning where the uh, template with the implanted catheters would be sutured to the perineum. The catheters are locked in place. The patient would then go for CT scan. On the CT, the prostate and normal uh, organs would be identified. The catheters would be reconstructed, a plan generated. And once the plan is ready, the patient would be brought into a shielded room for treatment delivery. They would be attached to the treatment machine and treatment would be delivered. More commonly though, ultrasound-based planning is being used. So after placement of the catheters, uh, instead of having to move the patient somewhere else for a CT or MRI, uh, the ultrasound itself can be used to generate a plan. Patients are then connected up to the uh, remote afterloading device and treatment can be delivered. An advantage of HDR, whether it be CT or ultrasound based planning is very consistent, high quality dosimetry. So we have a lot of certainty in our ability to cover the prostate with the desired dose and scoop out uh, areas which don't need it, such as the urethra. Many prefer the, to use real-time ultrasound based planning because this avoids having to move the patient and risk of catheter displacement it also allows us to sometimes fuse MR or PET scan to uh, focally boost disease. This can actually be very efficient and an experienced hand, the, the, the whole process can be completed in 60 to 90 minutes. The disadvantage, however, is that it usually requires a shielded OR. Three indications for brachytherapy have been described. One is as a boost with external beam for patients more with higher risk disease, as monotherapy for low risk disease and intermediate risk disease or a salvage. This is data of utilization of brachytherapy in Ontario. And over a decade from 2007 to 2017, there was a doubling in, of utilization of brachytherapy going from 7.5 to 15% of all prostate cancers treated. Uh, in 2017, uh, over a quarter, 28% of all patients having radiation had brachytherapy either as a boost or as, a, as, as monotherapy and HDR boost use increased 28% per year. There's a lot of data uh, from single centers and multi-center series uh, attesting to the efficacy of HDR boost. Uh, it is used primarily for patients with intermediate and high-risk disease and reported disease-free survival outcomes are typically over 90% for intermediate and somewhere between 70 and 80% for high risk disease. The most common fractionation scheme being 15 gray in a single fraction uh, or two fractions of 10 gray with HDR combined with a three or possibly five week course of external beam. Our results in Sunnybrook are excellent with uh, 15 gray as a single fraction and a three week course of hypofractionated external beam with a nadir PSA of 0.05, positive rebiopsy rate of less than 1%, five year disease free survival of 97%, an extremely low rate of late grade three urinary toxicity. How does this compare with external beam? Well, uh, there are um, multiple published retrospective comparisons demonstrating 
superiority of HDR as a boost compared to external beam only. This is data from a large Canadian uh, database. Uh, we have randomized trial evidence showing that external beam with HDR uh, results in superior outcomes compared to external beam only without any excess of urinary toxicity. And this is reflected in the ASCO uh, Cancer Care Ontario guidelines, which indicate that brachytherapy boosts with either HDR or LDR should be offered to men with intermediate and high risk disease. Who should be selected for HDR boost? Well, ideally patients with unfavorable intermediate or high risk disease. They should obviously be able to tolerate some form of anesthesia, either general or spinal. There are a few situations which require extra caution, such as patients with a large TERP defect, those with a large median lobe, those with large prostate volumes. These aren't absolute contraindications, but sometimes require some special considerations. There are some situations where HDR boost is likely preferred over other methods of radiation delivery. So for example, patients with um, seminal vesicle invasion, as in this example, this is very difficult to treat reliably with either external beam because of the motion of the seminal vesicle or of LDR brachytherapy because implanted seeds are very likely to be displaced. So HDR actually works very nicely in this situation. Our patients with extra prostatic extension, especially anteriorly, this is a difficult area to implant with uh, LDR brachytherapy because these seeds do have a tendency to end up anteriorly in the um, pre-prostatic plexus uh, and disappear. With HDR, we can much more consistently uh, treat lesions such as this. HDR doesn't always need external beam as well. And monotherapy refers to the use of HDR without external beam. Remember, the purpose of the external beam is really to cover disease extension beyond the range of the implant, for example, in nodes, and also the supplement dose within the prostate. If we select patients who are at low risk of disease beyond the prostate and deliver a high enough dose, then the external beam may not be necessary. And in fact, we do have quite a lot of series attesting to the efficacy and safety of HDR used on its own. Uh, many series report uh, very favorable outcomes, well in excess of 90% for patients with intermediate and low risk disease. The equivalent calculated dose uh, of HDR monotherapy um, is, is well over 100 gray if it was given by external beam. Uh, and that seems to pan out very nicely for, for well fractionated protocols where two, three, four, six, or perhaps nine fractions of uh, HDR are delivered. And these consistently show biochemical disease-free survival of well over 90%. People have also investigated the use of 19 gray as a single fraction but despite radiobiologic calculations, the resultant disease-free survival is inferior. So it's not to be recommended. So HDR monotherapy is primarily used to treat low and intermediate risk disease. It needs to be given in two or more fractions uh, using the uh, fractionation protocols as seen. There is less early urinary toxicity than LDR with excellent long-term outcomes. And in fact, is currently being evaluated compared to LDR brachytherapy in an ongoing Canada-wide uh, randomized clinical trial. HDR does allow a little extra flexibility. Uh, we're all using more uh, imaging to identify exactly where disease is, and we can use MRI uh, in this case to identify an area of uh, disease well localized within the prostate, either on MRI or on PSMA PET, and it is possible to uh, use these advanced imaging methods combined with the ultrasound to selectively boost the area of gross disease within the prostate. So this offers potential for higher disease control with less dose to the rest of the prostate, so less toxicity. So in summary, HDR is a temporary form of brachytherapy, which delivers a highly conformal dose to the prostate, 
It is associated with excellent long-term results when used as a boost for higher risk disease and can be used as monotherapy, but does require use of multiple fractions. And just finally, I will leave you with our, our schema for how we approach patients with, with uh, prostate cancer along the spectrum of prostate cancer in Sunnybrook for patients with uh, intermediate or selected low risk patients, we might offer them monotherapy. For patients with higher risk disease, we would use HDR boost using a single 15 gray fraction. And there is of course some area of overlap in between. I do thank you for your attention.